Yeah, I would say that, you know, Kite has really established itself as the world leader in cell therapy manufacturing. And uh, that's been through a lot of investment in both capacity as well as uh, our staff. Uh, and really it's a team sport that requires a lot of coordination uh, from the time we uh, aphorese a patient to the time the patient is receiving their medicine. So that coordination and experience is really what separates uh, Kite from uh, our, our competition and it makes us the world leaders in cell therapy. So the facility was approved uh, in June of 2020. Uh, so from that journey of time from construction to the time it was approved it was two years. Uh, That's a, a very uh, quick pace in which to bring a facility online. I would say the uh, ability from a technology platform to really uh, embed that um, technology into Amsterdam and the facility and then scale out uh, production and capacity uh, has been phenomenal to see. Uh, over 800 staff work in Amsterdam uh, doing that. Uh, work and uh, again, like I mentioned in my earlier answer, the, the team sport uh, definitely resonates with the team there in Amsterdam, and it's amazing that we've been able to get to uh, you know a 19-day turnaround time in Europe on average, uh, from vein to vein uh, for patients that we treat. So a, a lot of the uh, early phase of, of, of bringing this to patients was very manually based. Uh, so a lot of labor was required uh, to produce these therapies for patients. Going forward, uh, we're looking at uh, automation uh, and bringing in a semi-automated process, which actually is now approved in the U.S. Uh, and then in Amsterdam, uh, the facility that I'm at, uh, we have plans to bring that online next year and then moving into a fully automated process. And by that, you also close the process, you reduce the amount of man manual manipulations that are required in manufacturing. And then on the QC and testing side, we're also bringing in technology to reduce uh, the testing end. Uh, so end to end, we expect uh, in further improvements as well as just, uh, you know, an environment in which uh, staff who work uh, in a lower grade uh, class C type of environment, uh, it's more enjoyable for them as well. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I would say that the team in their lens, and I mentioned this in my talk, you know, there's over 50 different nationalities at that site. Uh, 800 staff, so from a uh, size uh, of the business there, as well as the cultural differences, I think that, that diversity definitely uh, is a, it makes it a great place to work. Uh, so culturally, it's been a phenomenal change for me working uh, primarily in the U.S. in my career to now being able to work uh, in a European site. And the, the number of countries that we're serving and the differences of the healthcare systems and appreciating that complexity uh, has just gone up uh, exponentially for me. So for me, it's been a, a great move. Sure, so I mentioned our automation platform, so we're looking at automation as a technology advancement uh, for manufacturing, uh, and then on the QC space as well, uh, the methods that are used today, how do we uh, streamline those, uh, make them more automated as well. So I think end-to-end -end from a manufacturing and testing perspective, those technologies do offer uh, a lot of advancement in that space, and uh, the European Center that I work at in Amsterdam is, is going to be a big part of that change. Sure, yeah, so, uh, and just to contrast this summit versus other summits that I've been to, biomanufacturing summits in the U.S., uh, it is definitely uh, great to see in Europe um, the, the history of how uh, technology has evolved here in this space. And uh, there was a talk earlier this morning about the different waves of advancements uh, throughout the history of biologics and how uh, perhaps we've gone back to the learning curve of where the early days were in the cell therapy space of how these technologies can be applied uh, to the manufacturing uh, center. So uh, for me, that kind of European perspective on how the evolution has happened here uh, in Europe, uh, and especially now with Kite in Amsterdam, I think we're on that journey, uh, and I appreciate uh, hearing the speakers this morning uh, refer to uh, you know that innovation uh, continuum that's occurring, and Kite has a large role to play in that uh, within this uh, in this conference as well as uh, throughout the rest of Europe. Yeah, I mean, I get, given the size of the conference and how uh, it is uh, this kind of mix of formal discussion, but also the informal interactions that you get to have, 
uh, it's great to be able to, to, you know, after a session, be able to walk into a small room, uh, introduce yourself to someone that maybe you don't know, uh, get to know their business, uh, have, you know, a good Q&A, and then form new uh, networks and new connections. And I think the environment that you've set up here is very conducive to that kind of uh, more close interaction than maybe some of the larger conferences people have been to.